so I'm going to uh, build a little bit on what uh, Dan was talking about uh, and zoom in a little bit on what price information uh, we've collected. Again, um, there was very little price uh, information uh, and data uh, beforehand, either from, I mean, it's not, there's not any kind of price indices, uh, especially on illegal, but even on legal me uh, medicinal marijuana in California, there was, uh, so we decided that we uh, needed to get, collect our own data. Um, and we, at, and Dan and I, uh, or Dan brought together a group of uh, researchers, of research assistants at the Ag Issue Center at Davis, uh, mostly undergraduates, um, who were given the fairly unusual undergraduate research task of combing through weed maps and Leafly and all the uh, you know uh, cannabis websites and, and collecting all these prices. Uh, Dan did his best to ha uh, handle their uh, questions like what is dabbing or you know these kinds of things. Uh, so uh, it was a, it was a. <laughs> uh, but before I uh, go on, I just want to say a couple words about. Uh, Marijuana versus cannabis. Uh, so during the time that we were working with the Bureau of Cannabis Control, actually, their name changed from the Bureau of Marijuana Control. Bureau of Mar it changed it about four times. Uh, went from it actually went from cannabis to marijuana and then back to cannabis. Yeah. Um, the word medical, the medical came in and out. So and med medical changed to medicinal. Um, but the, the the way that basically I think you should understand the difference between marijuana and cannabis is this is marijuana. And this is cannabis. Uh, that is to say, everywhere the used word cannabis is being used these days, it's talking about an industry that's mainstreaming, that's legal, that's uh, either partially or fully uh, legalized. And these are the kinds of people who smoke marijuana. And these are the kind of people who use cannabis. Um, so, uh, by the way, that's our friend Steve Zeliak. Uh, so um, the, the uh, this so uh, just uh, to give you a basic idea of what we did. So we collected prices on uh, three different. Uh, we survey. We started out our survey with about 500 uh, retailers, which are also known as dispensaries. Um, uh, a mix of re of delivery and uh, storefront retailers. Um, we collected prices on three types of products. One is an eighth, eighth of an ounce of dried cannabis flour. This is kind of the standard, most standard product. It's something you can get at almost every dispensary. Uh, and then we also looked at the price of one ounce. Uh, so you're getting kind of a quantity discount there, usually. Um, and, then, and then the price of a, one oil product, which is called a, a vape pen cartridge, which is, uh, and it's the most standard size there is 500 milligrams uh, of um, oil, of cannabis oil, which is usually about 60 to 70 percent THC, whereas the dried flour is about 20 to 30 percent, or 15 to 30 percent THC. So, and we, uh, we collected the high, we didn't collect every price at each store, we collected the high and the low. So we had, we wanted to look at what's the most expensive and the, and the cheapest uh, sort of basic level uh, cannabis. And here you can see, this is, these are prices per ounce, so this is, a, as an example, the price for one ounce. Uh, at 500 or so dispensaries. Uh, the red curve here is the distribution, of, uh, frequency distribution of prices at the high, of the high, the highest of priced cannabis at the store, and the blue is showing the low price. So first thing you obviously notice is that it's a, it, it looks multimodal uh, with a few, uh, with a, in this case, and this is from the first uh, observation period, and. Uh, this is from uh, October, November 2016. So this is before the Adult Use of Marijuana Act passed in California. So in 2000, late 2016, California voted, as Dan mentioned, to uh, legalize adult use marijuana, recreational uh, cannabis for everyone. Uh, that vote didn't have a lot of practical implications immediately in terms of regulation. Uh, regulations didn't start going into effect until 2018. But what, one thing that happened overnight when that uh, uh, vote after that vote took place is that uh, penal, criminal penalties were ended for possession. For, so it, it became, it was no longer uh, illegal or you couldn't any longer be arrested or fined for possessing and, and didn't, it doesn't matter who you buy it from. So buying is also not a crime. So we took this first, uh, we, we first looked at prices before, just before that uh, uh, vote happened. Um, and I'm not going to, 
And a couple th just basic things we noticed. So this is from our first observation period. The price, the average price of a eighth ounce was a, f a low low price was about twenty eight dollars for what we call an eighth, and then fifty four for a, uh, was the high high end average, one hundred and eighty to three hundred forty for one ounce, and thirty to forty for the cartridge. Um, another th and one thing that uh, is pretty e easy to see is that there's a correlation, there's a positive correlation between THC level, which is like the strength of the product, um, and price. There's also a correlation between, an inverse correlation between price and package size. So the uh, more you buy at a time, which is uh, obviously pretty uh, intuitive. So the price, I, I want to just uh, take a few minutes to look at the price, to, to look at how the price distribution uh, changed for both the high and the low end uh, in the months following uh, the, the voting of adult, the Adult Use Act passage in 2016, which is basically the first three observation periods of our survey, which we did in November and then January and then again in March of 2017. Um, so we started out here with this global maximum of the high end at $50, global maximum at 30 and then another modal point at $25. And what happened is over the next few months, uh, what we see is that the high, end, the high prices get higher and the low prices get lower in general. Um, and uh, again, this is not a result of any regulatory change. This is something that's happening over time. But the state is starting to sort of get used to the, um, get used to the idea that it's com you know, legalization is coming. Uh, and uh, so and, and a, a bunch of other things start happening. Also, invest, new investment by private equity and various people wanting to get into the industry. So there's, you have a big increase in production um, and uh, getting, getting ready for legalization. So you start to see these, high, these premium price products uh, kind of not only bubbling up, moving a little bit right, but you also see these kind of uh, tails on the right end. So this is just zooming in a little bit. Uh, November, January, and March, you see the, the local modal values. The, there's, there, you go from, this is $25, and then there's, you're starting to see more products at $20, and, and you still, still see the most at $35, but then on the high end, this is just the high end prices, you see starting at $50, and then you see these new uh, uh, pockets of demand at $60 and $75, or of supply. Um, and putting them together, uh, you basically see this spreading out, uh, where where the low, where the cheap stuff's getting cheaper, the more expensive stuff's getting more expensive. So that's, um, and then I also looked at this, um, uh, and for a, for a uh, completely different time period. This is beginning of 2018. So uh, and these, uh, because of the way we did the surveys, uh, actually we changed the methodology at the end of 2017. So they're not directly comparable, but. Um, here we're looking at what happens right after uh, legals, right after uh, the first regulations kick in. So that's, uh, as Dan mentioned, it's not all of them at once. Actually, pesticide testing hasn't started yet still. But on January 1st, it became the law that you had to have a temporary license in order to sell cannabis as a, as a retailer. So you had to basically tell the Bureau of Cannabis Control, hey, I'm on your radar screen. Uh, and so forth. So uh, at that point, all these retailers had to make the decision to go legal or to hide from the bureau. Um, and so, so uh, overall, what we see is basically the same trend happening. Starting, so from February to May, you see the orange, here the orange curves are high and the, and the blue curves are low. Uh, from February, you see the, for, for one, this is one eighth ounce here, you see that going from 50 up to almost $55 on, on the high end and then the low. You see it going from 30 down to closer to 25 uh, for one ounce, a similar trend. And then for uh, 500 milligrams, you see the highest price. Th these are for the, this is for vape pens. This is sort of like the most premium product, the way that the industry is premiumizing. You see the uh, average going from 40 to almost $50 in a few months uh, on the high end. And if you uh, zoom, if you deconstruct actually those trends into licensed and unlicensed, Dan has never seen this yet, uh, licensed and unlicensed uh, retailers, you can see uh, a bifurcation of the market in terms of people who are actually choosing to become re uh, registered and, and go completely legal. And you see that their prices are, uh, uh, but, none of, but actually what's interesting is that their prices aren't rising on the, on the low end. Um, even, so, so we have all these costs that we've added, these regulatory costs, and they're bearing already some of those costs and they're preparing for others. And, uh, and yet, it, uh, 
their, their, their selling price for an eighth goes from 30 to 27 or so. Uh, and so where they're taking their margins, as you can see, or where, where they're maybe compensating for that, is on the high end where you, where you see a, a noticeable increase. Um, uh, in all, and this is in all three segments, in the, in the oil and the two quantities of flour. Um, that is uh, my presentation, and um, we'll, talk, we'll take questions all together after. Thank you.